Another five-minute mystery. Sheriff, just one more question and my interview will be finished. Okay. That paper of yours certainly wants to know everything. Uh, what one thing in particular do you think is responsible for your excellent record in solving crimes? Observation. Keen observation. Uh -huh. You can pick up a wealth of information from hearing and remembering seemingly unimportant things. I remember one time... Excuse me. Sure. Sheriff Crowley speaking. Yes? Suicide? Ada Bell Fredericks? I'll be there in five minutes. I'm right with you, Sheriff. This is more than the paper bargained for. Uh, shouldn't there be powder burns around the wound, Sheriff, if this is suicide? Should be. That's why this is no suicide. It's murder. Murder? That's right. And I'd like to know where you two fit into the picture. I thought Miss Ada had always lived alone. Well, I'm Mabel Foster, the old dame's niece. She asked me to come live with her three weeks ago as sort of a companion, I guess you'd call it. Aunt Ada had very strange tastes in her choice of companions. I'm just as good as you are, you money-grabbing Beethoven. Break it up, break it up. Where do you fit in? I'm Paul Westcott, a nephew. I came here three days ago to discuss some business arrangements at Aunt Ada's suggestion. What business arrangements? She was changing her will. Yeah. Now i got to share half and half with this chiseler. I'm afraid you won't be sharing in any of it now, cousin. Murderers don't inherit. Say, what are you insinuating? I was in the kitchen putting nail polish on my fingers when I heard the shot. You have a nice manicure job there, Miss Foster. You know, I always smear mine. Having the patience to wait five minutes for them to dry, I guess. Who's oh, this female character? A reporter. Go on. Well, I was just finishing my left hand when Paul left. Where'd you go? I went out the side door to the garage, and I couldn't have shot Aunt Ada from the garage. But I didn't kill her either. I didn't have any reason. Seems to me you had plenty of reason, Miss Foster. Both of you. Cousin Mabel probably wouldn't wait for me to leave. She was just fooling around with her nails, waiting. I wasn't out of the house more than three minutes when I heard the shot. Mabel probably ran in the bedroom, got Aunt Ada's gun from the dresser drawer, and shot her. Now I know who murdered old Ada Fredericks, and it wasn't Mabel. It was you, Paul Westcott. Do you know how the sheriff trapped Paul, even though he claimed to be in the garage at the time of the shooting? Well, in just one moment, we'll hear, but first... mystery. You had to be the killer, Paul. Instead of going to the garage, you opened and slammed the door to make Mabel believe you'd gone. Then you tiptoed back into the room and shot your aunt. Mabel couldn't have fired the shot because, as the reporter here said, Mabel's fingers have an unusually nice polish job. Any married man would know that a woman sits around for at least five minutes waving her hands in the air so her polish will dry. But you admitted seeing her put the polish on less than three minutes before the shot was fired. Mabel couldn't have grabbed the gun out of the dresser and fired it. If she had, her polish would be smeared. Well, that's what I'd call having an alibi at the tip of your fingers. 